Welcome back. This is Time to Get Real. I am Lydie Denier, and today's topic, Israel-Palestinian relations. Joining me via Skype is Barry Nussbaum, founder of the American Truth Project. Barry, you had a visit from the former Israel ambassador. Uh, can you share with us what you two talk about? Yeah, Lydia, we spent uh, a week together. Uh, Danny I alone was here. We spoke at great length, not only about his time as Israeli ambassador to the United States, but also his service at the UN. He was also deputy foreign minister under Bibi Netanyahu. So it's a real insight from inside Jerusalem. Uh, and we talked a lot about what was going on in Gaza. Uh, what's going on at the Syrian border with chemical weapons, and uh, as well, what the prospects uh, of current peace negotiations are and the future peace negotiations with the Palestinian Authority, especially in regards to the West Bank. Tell me a, a little bit more about the American Truth Project. Uh, American Truth Project is a 501c3 nonprofit that we started some years ago. Our purpose is to educate the American public primarily on uh, four or five topics um, homegrown terrorism, Islamic terror, uh, fundamentalism, the Israel American relationship, and Middle East policies. Uh, the need for American Truth Project arose because these subjects are not being widely disseminated in a truthful manner. There is mainstream media which is telling a story that by and large is really not true. And our job is to bring the truth and that's what we do. We put out about uh, two million mailings a month. We do shows almost every day, sometimes from different places around the world. and. Uh, we're getting quite a favorable support from around the world. That's fantastic. You know, that's why I do with my show. It's to educate people. I think there's a great need. And also for people to understand, to hear what the others has to say instead of believing, you know, all of the news that's around. Right. Um, what is a peaceful solution? I, I assume you mean uh, in For Israel. With Israel and, and yes. Okay. The the big problem, Liddy, is you've got two governments, one in the Gaza Strip area, run by an international uh, terrorist organization called Hamas, and in the West Bank by a less known terrorist organization called the Palestinian Authority. And the reason why I call them both terrorists is quite simply when you teach your people every day to kill Jews, to destroy Israel by any and all means necessary, and you start that education with children in preschool and you continue it up until the day they die, the prospects for peace, for leading a peace movement, if that was truly your goal, is impossible. I, I often talk about the two stories, and what I mean by that is, in Arabic, the members of the government of Hamas and the members of the government of the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank talk about murder and mayhem and suicide bombings and missiles and terror tunnels and bus bombings, and I mean every single day, and they promote it. And then the story in the West, especially when the leadership goes to either the EU, the UN, or the White House is, we want peace. We want to live in harmony. We want a two-state solution. Liddy, both stories cannot both be true. One is a lie. And in my opinion, based on being there a lot, the lie is that they want peace. What they want is freedom for the Palestinian people from the river to the sea. And that's their slogan. All over the territories, and the river is the Jordan River, and the sea is the... That happens to be, by the way, where the country of Israel exists. You can't have it both ways. And it's very unfortunate that they are using children. I mean, they start them very young to hate people and to kill people. 
and uh, also schools. Um, years ago, one of my nephew came home. I was, uh, you know, visiting friends, my family, and he came home from school and he said, "Aunt Liddy, I hate the Germans." And I said, "Why?" He said, "Well, didn't you see what they did to us during the war?" I said, well, honey, you were not born. You're only eight years old, and uh, I wasn't born either. I said, you know, we have to, you, you know, the teaching for history, yes, but the teaching to hate other people just because that's what they did 40, 50, 100 years ago. But it starts with children. Um, I have lots of friends, lots of Jewish friends, and you know, in Hollywood, and let's face it, the Jewish people created Hollywood a long, long time ago. But it would be great to have peace. I'm not sure peace will happen anytime soon. Um, Israel celebrated its 70th birthday yesterday. So who knows, we'll see. Uh, do you travel a lot over there? Not as much as I would like. My, uh, two of my children are going to school there now. Uh, so I'm in contact with them uh, on a daily basis and with uh, a, a great number of contacts both inside and outside of the government on a daily basis because, quite frankly, that's a major part of what we do at American Truth Project. Our national director actually lives in Israel, and he's filming on location every day, and we're producing um, video content from Israel almost daily. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about the uh, chemical weapons over there. Yeah, you know, it's, it's an open secret that uh, Bashar al-Assad and his father before him um, consider chemical weapons to be not only um, acceptable within their society, but highly useful. And they've used them dozens and dozens of times. If you go back a number of years, uh, Former President Obama created a red line in the sand, and he warned Syria not to use chemical weapons again. And if they did, there would be a profound and impactive uh, American response. As the world knows, uh, Assad did it, uh, killed a lot of Syrians, and uh, unfortunately, President Obama did nothing, which the Syrians took as a license to do it whenever they wanted to. Uh, the strike that uh, American uh, British and French jets carried out not too long ago uh, is a warning of what could happen next, but sadly did not take out all the weapons and did nothing uh, to influence or degradate the delivery systems of those chemical weapons. My people in Israel tell me Syria still has a lot of chemical weapons stockpiled and more importantly, their airborne delivery systems, Lydia, were not touched at all. So the helicopters, the missile launching sites, and the jet planes that drop these bombs on Syrians are all still intact. And my guess is Assad will use them again. Why? There hasn't been a consequence of magnitude yet. I know. It, it, you know, I, I woke up the, in the morning and I saw the, uh, the French, the British, and the Americans were together and, and going into Syria. And uh, the next morning, there's uh, uh, Trudeau in, in Canada who said, I am completely behind the French, the British, and the Americans. And I'm thinking, where are you? I mean, you know, it's like, it's really, I'm so glad you're behind us, but where are you in this matter? Um, <laughs> Barry, anything you want to add that you would like the listeners to, to understand before we uh, close the show? You know, and thank you for that question, and I appreciate uh, the time. I think it's important that your audience understand that everybody in Israel wants peace, and the majority of citizenry uh, in the West Bank wants peace. The problem is when the majority of the budget in the West Bank goes to support terrorism, specifically their pay-for-slay programming, which means the best job you can have in the West Bank is to kill an Israeli. And if you kill a lot of Israelis, your family is set for generations. They literally pay murderers' families 
and terrorists that have been captured but not martyred that sit in Israeli jails more than they pay the government officials, more than teachers, more than engineers, more than anybody in the West Bank. It's the best paying job there is. Now, the Taylor Force Act here in America was supposed to stop American aid until the Palestinians stopped paying people to blow up buses. And you know what? Sadly, hasn't had an influence. So as long as the terror exists, as long as the education in the schools doesn't change, as long as terror tunnels keep being dug under the Gaza border, and I was there a few months ago and filmed it, Nothing's going to change. There will be no peace until the people demand peace, peace and yes. they get a government to lead them will do it. Well, thank you, Barry, so much for being with me today. And I do hope you'll come back soon. Absolutely. Love to.